Rosh Hashanah, we're on the eve of a great festival, Jewish festival. At least that's what people think. Is it a festival about apples and honey and wishing everybody a new year? Or it is the festival of the shofar, the sound of warning. Rosh Hashanah is a sign, a prophetic sign from God. It is an appointed time that has deep prophetic meaning. And tonight we're going to look at that on the Night Watch. We are on the eve of a great festival of Israel, Rosh Hashanah. But what few people know is the prophetic sign that we find in these festivals, and that they're not festivals at all in that sense. They are called Moedim, the appointed times of God, and they are signs, prophetic signs, for us. First, Let's look at what prophetic signs are in the Torah itself. In the first chapter of Torah, Genesis 1, verse 15, it says this. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day and the night. And let them be for signs. We need to understand that God set everything in motion. He set the moon, the sun, the stars, and that they were to be for signs and for seasons, to mark days. And most importantly, God's appointed days, the Moedim, of which Rosh Hashanah is one of them. And we're going to look at that prophetic sign tonight. And we're going to look at what the, what the Lord says in the Torah about the Sabbath. In Exodus 31, 13, let me read that in Hebrew. The Lord says, Shabbatotai tishmaru ki ot hu. Literally, these are my uh, appointed times. These, this is my Sabbath which you shall keep. Ki ot hu, it is a sign. So the point I'm trying to make here is that Moedims are signs, prophetic signs from God. So what, are, what is the purpose of a sign? What is a prophetic sign? It is something visible for us. Remember, God is spirit. But a sign is visible for us. It's something we can see. And it points toward a greater truth, an understanding. It gives us vital information or perhaps a warning. Now, some people have translated uh, ot, signs, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, moed, a moed, a date, as a deadline. So what signs do we see in Rosh Hashanah? his appointed time, his moed. We are given more information in Leviticus chapter 23, 24. And it says this, Speak unto the children of Israel and say, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Now, I want to read that in the Hebrew because it's, it's a little leaner than that, and it is the precise words that are being used here, and that's very important. And what On the first day of the seventh month. So this is not the first month of the year. It's a very special month set apart, the seventh month, which is also prophetic, the number seven. And it says, There shall be to you a Sabbath of remembrance, a solemn day set apart to remember. But to remember what? There's only one word left, Taruah. It says, Yiyei lachem shabaton zakaron tarua. 
you shall remember Taruah. Literally, that's saying a memorial of a shout, a blast. It's interpreted as the blast of the shofar, but the word teruah means a sharp, loud noise or sound or voice. And here's where the prophetic meaning really lies. Uh, you could celebrate Rosh Hashanah as a New Year celebration, but the prophetic meaning is, is a solemn day, a Shabbat, a Shabbaton, a serious solemn day where you are going to remember Tarua. Tarua is a shout, a loud blast, perhaps of the shofar, and we see in other places uh, that the shofar is mentioned in this blast. Now the shofar, the trumpet, or the horn of God, was meant to assemble God's people. Usually it's a long, loud blast, and it's a warning to God's people. So herein we begin to see the significance of the teruah, or the real meeting here of Rosh Hashanah. We need to go to the book of Exodus, chapter 19, 17, 18, and 19. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Now listen to this. And when the voice of the trumpet, notice that, the voice of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by a voice. So here is that, these verses out of Exodus. And it is, we need to remember a memorial of that time, of the first hearing of the shofar, and the appearance of God, and the covenant with God. This is also a prophetic significance in that it is a foreshadow of the time God will come again in fire with the blast of a shofar to come in judgment of the nations. So we need to hear uh, through the Torah, through the, the uh, ministry of God's people Israel throughout the ages, and finally, the Israel that brings forth the Messiah that calls us to repentance. Yeshua, the Messiah, lifted up his voice like a trumpet and said, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent of your sins. Turn away from the darkness and the wrong ways of this world and believe in God and follow him. These are the deeper significant moments of the Torah. How significant is the trumpet? How significant is the shofar? Well, it appears again in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, and it's very significant for believers, for Christians. So hear what the shofar is saying. So what about Christians? They believe in the God of Israel, they have heard some kind of calling voice, calling them to believe. They have made that commitment. Yes, we need to understand that God has a tree of life and that Israel are the original branches. We as Gentiles who have come to hear the voice of God, hear that, that shofar, that teruah, if you will, have come to believe and we are grafted into that tree as well. It's very significant, and we have very vital uh, information in the Brit Chadashah, the New Covenant writings, of which this verse, 1 Thessalonians, is a part of. So let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God 
and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. And here we have the prophetic meaning. It's saying the day of the Lord is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. And this is signified by this trumpet sound. Rosh Hashanah begins 10 days called the 10 days of awe. They are a time where we uh, look at our lives closely. We recognize our sinfulness and the sins we have committed. We confess them before God. We repent of them and turn to God. Hear that trumpet and turn to God and recognize him as our God and we are his people. These 10 days of awe lead up to the final day called Yom Kippur, which we will talk about soon on the next night watch, Yom Kippur, the day of judgment. The time of God's judgment, the day of the Lord. The word says it will come with the blast of a trumpet. Rosh Hashanah, the sound of the shofar. You know, for those who believe in the Lord and have received his salvation, the sound of the shofar is a sound of joy. And that invitation still goes out to you and to your family today. Won't you hear his voice in the blast of the shofar calling you out of the darkness of this world to believe in the kingdom of light that is coming. God sent his only begotten son, whose name is Yeshua, Jesus, which in Hebrew means salvation. And the word of God says this, today, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart, but believe in him. God loves you and sent his only son and wants you to have the fullness of life. Believe in him today. Take this invitation now and may God bless you and your family today and may tomorrow be a day of joy for you. Shalom. If you are interested in more information on the last days and what is coming in the biblical calendar, read my book, Endgame. It's available on Amazon.com and through my website, The Jonah Mission.